Good afternoon, everybody, on this special Monday matinee. We are in Colorado for a showdown between the Rocky Mountain Monstars and Indy Stripes in a Frontier Division clash on Simworld TV. Very special Monday afternoon. I am Marsh, joined in the booth today by Siege. Siege, welcome to Colorado. Welcome to the special game. Uh, thanks. It's so nice to be here. One of my favorite places to be. The Rocky Mountain Monsters coming in at 2-0 on the season. And Indy Stripes coming in at 0-2, top and bottom of the Frontier Division. is the very pivotal matchup for both squads as we get underway here in Colorado. Block on the opening possession. I know we've seen the Indy Stripes start 0-2, but I think they've got a lot of talent. I think they've just got to put it together. They've got some guys out there I'm looking forward to watch. Obviously, the always vocal Benari James is out here tonight. Mid-range bucket falls there to get the Monstars on the board. And, and you're right, we, we saw them. Uh, I believe it was you and the booth last week. And a powerful slam on the opposite end uh, for Indy as they suffered their Just second more. loss in giving the Beyond the Arch their first win of the season. They had a game that was 0-3 at the time. Uh, but Indy Stripes now trying to be the team that claims a victory. Uh, now 0-2, as we said earlier. Two minutes in, approaching it. It's just one minute in, 2-2 two -two game, and the deep two won't fall. See, so biggest thing that you're going to be looking for here on both sides of the ball. Well, on Indy's side of the ball, I can tell you one guy I'm really excited to watch, Johan Milajevic. I think he's a great guy uh, off the off the rip. He, he's not ranked at the moment. I think he very easily could be. He's a big guard at 6'4". He can score the ball. He plays with a pace to his game, kind of. He's, he can blow by it, but he's not looking to do that every time. Justin Bell. Three falls there for Justin Bell, and that makes it a Rocky Mountain 5-4 lead. And, and you mentioned Noah Jovic, another powerful slam inside, and the Indy Stripes are up 6-5 here. You mentioned... Um, Jesus, where was I going with that, Siege? I, I apologize. It's, the slam is completely taking me aback. You mentioned Johan Rattle. That's where you were going. Yeah, I, is, saw, I mentioned him. Go ahead. Well, in I think the biggest thing for Noah Jovic in their last game against the Army Arch, he had 11 first four points, or first half points in 10 minutes. Played two minutes the rest of the way. So I think the biggest thing for me with Noah Jovic, I'm glad you brought him up, is is he going to be able to actually see the court for an extended period of time for Indy? and long enough to really get the, the ball going, and is he going to be factored into this offense in pre one fall? And, you know, I think they use him as kind of that spark off the bench, and, and they want him to come in and, and get hot when they when they need it. But I'll say I think he's someone they need to consider playing more minutes because he can also run the point. He's a very, what's the word? He's a very, like I said, calm. He's got pace to his game. He can really take the offense. And can, make it a little more organized for them. And I think he's someone they need to put the ball in his hands a little more often, not just from a scoring standpoint, but from a game management standpoint. I think he can slow their game down while making it a little bit more organized, put the game together, put the offense together for them. Three on that end won't fall for Rocky Mountain. It's Benari James going into his bag of tricks. Mitty won't fall as well on the other end. And for Rocky Mountain, biggest thing that you're going to be looking for is they try to improve to three yeah, the biggest thing I, I can see from Rocky Mountain, they're the top scoring, not top scoring, but they've got the best field goal percentage in Sim World Hoops at the moment. They get shots they like, they they make sure they don't take ill-advised shots, they're, they're a smart team, um, and that's something that's going to take them really far, and they, they've got a lot of talent around it, and they're kind of what you want to see when you have a lot of talent on a roster, is those guys not just chucking up shots, but they know they'll make in practice, and then they know that they can make in pickup games. But they say, this is a real game. We're going to get our good shots. We're going to get open shots, and we're going to take those. And that's something I think a, a lot of the league could learn from Rocky Mountain. Warren James freed up for an easy two. And good. foul here good. called on Kirby Ordway. Bucket goes. Rocky Mountain now. Chance to take their largest lead at 10-8. to eight As the foul calls, sending Daquan McDougal the third to the line. A handful of... Ranked players in action today. We've got four per squad. Daquan McDougal, the third, is the top ranked player for Rocky Mount. He's number 17th in the nation, uh, but he's flanked by Kenneth Gaffney, who's 48, Lucas Baker, or Banks, who's 88, and then 
Maury Washington, the 100th ranked player in Sim World Hoops on the opposite side. We've got four players for Indy Stripes. Top guy is Reza Red, who's kind of tumbled down the rankings. He came in as a top 10 player, but he's really struggled to get get that game going. It's something I'd, I'd like to touch on, but to wrap up the ranks, we've got Jay Lust, number 59. Uh, Kirby Ordway, 72, as Benari Benari James. James, another pull-up bucket falls, and Benari James, the aforementioned, number 84. But Reza Red, a guy that's kind of tumbled down the rankings a little bit here, what's been, in your opinion, the most surprising part of that? Uh, I really think it has a lot to do with he, he's just got to get his game going. He's got to get it rolling. When we saw him in the preseason, you know, it, it's the difference, and we harp on this a lot, it's the difference between playing a pickup game and playing an organized game of basketball. And we watched him in the preseason where he got that, you know, top of the ranking spot. We're, we're looking at a guy who he can score. He can make plays. He's a hooper. But really, it's it's how does that translate to an organized game of basketball? How how do you run off of screens? How do you set screens? How do you move off the ball? How do you set up your teammates? Those aren't always things that we really see that really matter as much when you play pickup. And I think we're seeing that take effect um, this season. That I think we just got to adjust to it. Powerful slam there. Four points for Rocky Mountain All Star, Rocky Mountain Monster. Excuse me, not the All Star, the backyard baseball player. Damn there. And they're up 12-10, turnover. We're headed the opposite Cookies. direction, but he dribbles out of bounds. And that's going to be an unforced turnover for Rocky Mountain. And it's going to head back the other way for Indy Stripes down two points. But they've gotten good performance thus far from their top guy, Benari James, at least tonight top guy, and a guy that came in facing plenty of uh, criticism isn't the right term, but plenty, plenty of polarization surrounding Benari James at the start of the season. Yeah, it's like we said, he's a very vocal player. You're going to hear from him a lot. He, he's in the spotlight. and He's there he's because, hard. I mean, no he's got the talent to back it up most of the time. He shows it. He's a flashy guy. Um, and he's, a, he's plain and simple. He's an entertainer. On and off the court. No, Jovic, his first bucket, quickly steps in. And scores two points right away off the bench. A very efficient score here for Rocky, or for the Indy Stripes. Pull up, bucket deep two, falls on the other end. 14, 12, it's Banks on the two. Trading bucket, this is what we like to see. Swings it over to Noah Jovic yet again. Inside to the post. Three seconds to shoot, kicks out to Noah Jovich. The three pointer will fall. Three. Five points for Noah Jovich quickly Yo, off the bench Noah here. Jovich. Indy strikes up 15 14. Two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Noah Jovich coming in and doing exactly what we know. Or he, so he can get the game going for them, and that's going to have opportunities for his teammates. Going to work inside there on Reza Red. Easy two points. Right back, we've got a very competitive back and forth game between Rocky Mountain and Indy Stripes. First of our only game of tonight, a mid-range bucket falls there for Tyler Stevens. And the lead back, swing, swinging back the other direction. Indy Stripes now back up by one minute and a half to play in the opening eight minute court. And one thing I think is going to be big in this game is we already touched on uh, Rocky Mountain having the best field goal percentage in the league. but. Indy, you know, on the other side of it has the worst field goal allowed in the league. Uh, I think that's going to be something we're going to have to look at all night. Can they defend these good shots that Rocky Mountain creates for themselves? And that being said, I think part of the reason they get a lot of high percentage shots, Rocky Mountain bigs are aggressive. They're big, they play physical, they've got, you know, a guy who plays football, they've got a guy who wrestles, they're, they're big, strong, and they play that way. Davis hits a corner three, gives Rocky Mountain their lead up to two here, 45 seconds to play. And you mentioned that, that disparity of field goal percentage. We're seeing a little bit of that here as Indy Stripes has struggled to get a couple buckets here in the last two possessions. And now we'll get an offensive three-second violation. And that'll give the ball back to Rocky Mountain with an opportunity to extend this lead here late in the first quarter to potentially two possessions, 36.1 to play in the lone Simrul TV game of our night. And we'll be back with a doubleheader on Tuesday, seven and nine o'clock tomorrow night, but a big divisional, frontier divisional tilt here. It's Siege, 
we'll, we'll get it to the other side, but I'll, I'll tease the question for you. The importance of getting a divisional win for both squads is a three falls. I believe that's Davis again. 22-17 extends the lead to five. Largest of the quarter. 12 seconds. Novajovic, top of the key. Underneath the 10, gets a screen from Red. Takes that pull up, three. Oh, fall. Rebound headed the other way to the Monsters, and a half court heave will not be good, but that is it for our first quarter. 22 17. Rocky Mountain Monsters on top. Andy Stripes. Welcome back to Colorado for the second quarter. Rocky Mountain Monsters holding a five-point lead over the Indy Stripes in a very pivotal Frontier Division game. And I, I teased it earlier in the second or in the first quarter siege. But if you're Indy, you're 0-2. How important is it to get a win here, considering it'll be a third straight divisional loss to begin the season? Well, the divisional wins in general are so big. I mean, a win in general would be nice for them. But when you talk about division wins, especially early in the season, uh, you're talking about teams still figuring it out. That's kind of your opportunity. Like, if you can get those divisional wins, you're going to want to get them. Because as the season goes on, you've got later games that are going to matter more. You're going to have teams, one, having figured things out a lot more. A lot of teams are going to be a little more put together. They're going to have their offenses figured out, their defensive schemes figured out. Uh, a little earlier in the season, you've got that going for you, and you've also got the intensity. Late, late in the season, you're going to have teams playing as hard as they possibly can, not that they're not now, but it, there's just a little more fire to it. So these early divisional wins are a little a little more important to me because later they're more important to the overarching story. They're more important to the overarching standings and things like that. Right now, it's important if you're a team like Indy, you got to snag them where you can. 
you got to snag them now, early, when teams aren't quite as polished off as they're going to be later in the season. Noah Jovic leading the scores for Indy to five, although Benari James to the rack Benari for two more. James. He's now up to six, taking over that team lead. And Zane Davis had six first quarter points for the Monsters off a pair of triples. In the way, but a couple guys with five as well for the Rocky Mountain. Mid range two won't fall here, headed the other way in Indy. Operating inside, forced to pick up the dribble. Benari James freed up. Triple team comes, attacking the hoop and swatted away. Rebound headed the other way for Rocky Mountain. Tough layup around the hoop and in, 24-19. We're, we're seeing Rocky Mountain do exactly what we talked about. They shoot a very high percentage and they're doing it today. They make their shots, they get their good shots. Mm -hmm. Triple falls there on the opposite end, and he's staying close because of that. You can see just the storylines you mentioned uh, begin to develop here league-wide. Any storylines that have kind of stood out to you? You know, it's still early for me. I'm still watching teams develop uh, their, their play. Their, the way they play the game, their offense, their defensive schemes. You know, paying a little bit of attention to the talking that's going on, the player rivalries that are coming on. My favorite still being our guy here, Benari James. Just a flashy guy, always got something to say. Um, so yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm still very focused on these teams' play development. Uh, the, story, the stories are going to heat up as we keep going, but I'm, I'm ready to see these teams heat up in the way they play the game. Well, certainly, Bernard James is not afraid to back down from anyone. His, his, his rhetoric has certainly cooled in the recent months. From when he first entered the league, uh, plenty of chatter out of him. Though certainly the biggest chatter uh, since the last time we spoke was the suspension on hope. Here we go, Bernard James behind the Bernard back into the James. hoop for two more. Flashy guy. Bernard taken over for Indy. Uh, but the biggest uh, talking that has had the most consequences was the indefinite suspension of Malik Drayton. Uh, he had some choice words following uh, the last part of the zombies loss. As a, as a part of that, ends up getting suspended. Any take on that? You know, I, I think it's one of those things where you've got young kids here. We forget sometimes that these are high schoolers. And, you know, he said, he, he like you said, he had some choice words and as much as this is about learning the game of basketball, learning, you know, developing your skills, learning how to play, it's also about learning how to kind of be in that spotlight, learning how to kind of filter what you say, things like that. Um, and if nothing else, that's going to be a, a life lesson, a learning lesson for the league. And I hope he can take from that, eventually find his way back into, if not this league, a league, you know, it's an indefinite suspension, but hopefully he, he takes the silver lining from that and he learns that, hey, if I'm going to be a player, um, of high caliber, I'm, I'm going to be in the spotlight and everything I say is going to be under a microscope. So, you know, like I said, not just developing these guys as basketball players, but as, as people in a sports world that you're always under a microscope. Deep three for Rocky Mountain around and in, and the lead extends to eight points. That's the largest of the game here as we're approaching three minutes to play and a foul and one on the other end on McDougal. That's going to get Indy back within six points. 34-28 opportunity to take it all the way back down. Towns Romanowski had four first quarter points, adding to that total here in the second quarter. And we're, we're seeing it here, that high field goal percentage. It's helping the Monsters get ahead. Uh, Indy's just trying to keep up with them at this point. And I think a big part of what they're going to need to do I know Indy likes to play fast at times, but I think if they're going to have a chance in this game, they've got to slow things down because every possession the Monsters get, they're shooting 60% from the field on the season. That means six out of 10 possessions statistically, they're going to get a bucket. So if you can limit the number of possessions they're going to get, I think that's how you're going to have a chance to win this game. Otherwise, you're going to be playing catch up the whole time. Ireland early has the ball over. Tough layup falls for the Monsters. Kenneth Gaffney for two points, 36-29, Monsters. We've seen a, a struggling Noah Jaldic here in the second quarter for the Indy Stripes. He's no longer on the court after a number of turnovers. 
Bernari James, though, has taken over the scoring. He kicks it out to Ordway. Ordway's three, no good. Rebound, though, staying down here. Romanowski, Romanowski excuse me, won't get the three to go. 36-29. Couple of offensive opportunities there for Indy. Unsuccessful. And couldn't get the second chance points, but like I was saying, limiting possession. For the strikes are going to be big, too. That's an extra possession for them. And keeps the ball out of the monster's head. A tough layup for Maury Washington Falls, 38-29. Monsters lead back up to nine. James gets a screen for Romanowski. Inside the three-point line, that won't go. Rebound headed the other way. One possession, one pass, one shot. Ends it, Ireland early for three, 41-29. The Monsters starting to get hot from deep as the second quarter's coming near the close. We're, we're still seeing we're easy bucket from Benaria, but we're still seeing the Stripes take these seven second offense shots they, they, in the first seven seconds they're putting up shots and that might work for them in some games although some would say it's not being 0-2 but against this Monsters team if it becomes a game of possession, possession, possession the Monsters have the stats to back themselves up and I don't know if that's going to go so well for the Stripes here Tough layup for the Monsters and the lead back up to 12 answering the barrage of scoring that Benari Jones has had step back over for jo James won't fall again a quick possession 107 to play and the Monsters have a chance here to really start putting the early foot on the neck as the second quarter's coming to a close. Tough drive, can't get that to go. Rebound handed the other way. 53 seconds to play in the first half. 12 point lead, Rocky Mountain. Jay Luss picks pocket, headed the other way. Cookie Gaffney. Slows it down with 40 seconds to play, looking for a two for one opportunity. Unlikely to develop all the way. Won't be a deep three. It'll just be the one possession here. Justin Bell kicks it over to Gaffney. Gaffney's three won't go. Rebound Washington. Ten seconds to shoot. Thanks to the reset. Up top to Gaffney. Gaffney gets a screen from early. Three-pointer. Off the front rim and out. Ten seconds to play. Indy operating in the other direction. Picks it, Benari James, corner, deep two, won't fall. Can't get the rebound, Bell will hold it. The late heave will be after the buzzer, and that is the first half. Rocky Mountain with a second quarter surge, taking a 43-31 lead into halftime and siege. As we look and we take this quick halftime break, what was the biggest facilitator of that run for Rocky Mountain? I think the biggest facilitator was team basketball. We also saw... Uh, early, early made a lot of shots. He was scoring, and it just comes from that high percentage. They get themselves good shots, and he was. Well, the first quarter was dominated by Zane Davis in terms of those two threes that helped Rocky Mountain get up to an early lead. But the, as you mentioned, you talked about Justin Bell, Maury Washington, Kenneth Gaffney. They all started to get super involved in that second quarter. Meanwhile, see, kind of the Benari James show. Yeah, and we, we see that a lot from Stephen Ari James showing himself. Um, but I think they're going to need a little bit more, you know, and I think where they can find that little bit more, put, put Jovic on the court. We will but. be back for the third. Remember those pesky squirrels? Uh-huh. Well, I trained them. Fun! Squirrels cutting coupons! Yep. It's going to save us a ton of money and time. I love your brain, Bob. Me too. You know! Your tyranny ends now, you filthy humans! Not up, my brothers! You seem so cool! Yeah! Oh! The day of the squirrel is upon us! No, 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 no! no. Yeah! No, 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 no. Oh, it's burning my head! Yeah. Oh, God, it's mating with my mouth. <laughs> Bobby!
yeah. Inspiration ain't required. I go hard in the pain even when I'm tired. Cause I'm on my own. Welcome back to Colorado, the second half of our showdown between the Rocky Mountain Monsters and Indy Stripes. Rocky Mountain with four players with six or more points, taking them to a 12-point lead as Ireland early can't get that layup to go. It's Justin Bell leading the way with nine points in the first half, and early with eight at the block there by Daquan McDougal the third on Benari James, springing into motion a little bit of uh, offensive transition, but Ireland early shot won't fall. Deep three there from Booby Walker also won't go. And Rocky Mountain failing on their first three shot attempts here. Inside for two on the opposite end. Indy Stripes right back in this thing, cutting the lead down to 10. It's Benari James with 13 points in the first half. So Indy, the only player in double figures either side. Benari's doing what he does. He's scoring the ball. Let's see him get, get some teammates in the ball, but they're going to come back in this game. Gaffney. Yeah. I apologize, Siege. Ireland early three more points. He's three for three from deep. Pushes his game total to 11. One of the better three-point shooters in the league, Siege Island early. A capable deep threat. Certainly the attention tends to fade towards guys like Trey Turner, but Ireland early is certainly no joke from beyond the arc. James, though, I'm continuing a very efficient scoring night for him. He's up to 15 points. And Benari has had some, some up and down games siege where he takes a lot of shots, makes a lot of them, but he's also had some games where he's really struggled to get going and that's been detrimental. I guess some games has been two, so one good game scoring them, one not so great. Uh, finding that equilibrium I think is going to be the biggest thing for Benari James and most importantly having it factor into wins. Yeah, absolutely. Like we keep saying, he's a flashy guy. He's going to get his, uh, he's going to have some bad nights, but that comes with being a volume scorer, and he's a volume scorer by nature. He's going to put up his shots. Some nights they're going to fall, and he's going to look like prime Lamp Stevenson. And some nights they're not going to fall, and he's going to look like Smush Parker out there. Gaffney for two more, 48-37. And that, CJ, that was your your peak and valley, right? Was Lance Stevenson, was that Benari's peak, or was that his valley? 
That's what I, 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 he gives me flashes of Lance, you know, with the flashiness, with the talking. He, he gives me flashes, but also with the play style. You know, he gets past people. He's kind of a, a more stout guard. You know, he, he's strong. And he reminds me of Lance Stevenson a lot when he goes to the buckets and when he crosses over. Uh, so that's that's what I think he could be. And I'm not talking over Lance. I'm talking, I'm talking prime Lance, the guy who dueled with LeBron when he was in Indiana on those teams with Paul George. Uh, that's that's what I see Benari could be, a guy who can do it all like Lance could and also can play defense like he could. Uh, here he is, just, you know, dribbling the ball around, just, what's he doing? Three there for Ordway. Kirby Ordway. That answers a three on the other end from Ireland early. He improves to four for time four. Timeout, timeout. From beyond the arc, and that's going to lead to a Rocky Mountain Started. timeout here. 4.55 to play here in the third quarter. Rocky Mountain entered with a 12-point lead, and they're going to hold that 12-point lead for the first three minutes of the second quarter. From a scouting perspective, Siege, any name that you see out here that kind of maybe jumps out above the rest? From a scouting perspective? My mm -hmm. first my first guy I'm looking at if I'm a scout in this, McDougal. McDougal's a big guy. He's talented. He's a hustle guy. He's, he's got the size for a guy who's only 16 years old. He He's huge. And so he's got a couple more years before he's really even, you know, getting offers, getting for real recruited. I'm sure there are people who are looking at looking at him right now, but he's got a lot of development before he's really ready. But I, I think there are teams that would want to be looking at him right now. And he's still got a couple of years before he's ready to go anywhere. So that's the first guy I'm looking at. I'm obviously looking at a guy like Bernari James as come in, score. I think he could score at any level. What I'm looking at, if I'm a scout for him, is – you know, if I'm a college coach, I want to start to see how he can play with a team. It's clear that he can score on anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, once you get to the next level, though, that's not quite as easy. You're going to have better defenders. You're going to have better defensive schemes from teams. Uh, and, and that's what I want to see as a scout from him. How is he going to develop his game to not just, I can score? Because, you know what? Maybe he is going to be that guy at, at, a, at the next level, at higher levels. But you, you got to see from him that he can do other things, too. Dougal had seven points in the first half with three boards. Here's Noah Jovich, another three. And he's taken I think, three or four off-balance pull-up jumpers. And that has certainly led to three or four misses, however many that he's taken. I can remember three off the top of my head, including that one. Gaffney getting freed up on the side of the pin down screen. Doesn't get the ball. Now he does. And on Washington, or excuse me, Walker coming over for the screen. Working on Reza. Red is Kenneth Gaffney. Can't get that to go. Walker the board. And over the banks. You can't allow offensive rebounds to this monster. They, man, we'll harp on it some more. They shoot a high percent. You can't be giving them more possession. Brungo with the ball after a flashy pass leads to a turnover, but can't get that to go. Walker on the board. Kick up to early. Deep two won't fall off the front rim. Can't count as a miss on his three, about two feet inside the line. Still four for four from deep. That's where he's done the majority of his damage. And Brungo trying to get that one, but off the left side of the rim. No real chance. And, and Marsh, and next, time, play. next time the stripes get the ball, I want you to I want you to count in your head the seconds from the time they get across half court to the time they put the ball up. From the time they get past half court, when they put a shot up, I can guarantee it won't be more than seven. And Gaffney taking this one late in the shot clock. That's off the board. Rebound in the other direction. They got that across about the 21 second mark inside to Reza Red. That shot goes up shortly thereafter. But this one leads to points. 10 point lead now for the Rocky Mountain Monster. Reza Red gets his first buckets of the second half. Gaffney getting a screen there. Hand off to Banks. Banks working on Noah Jovic inside the paint. Up under, can't get that to go. Rebound out of the other direction. And Sean Chapman Daly, who had some choice words over the past week about wanting to get some more minutes on the court. The team at 0 2, so that can be problematic. As a red can't follow that one up over McDougal as he pulls in the board. That's to Walker. Walker with the one handed slam and the lead back up to 12, as it has been for much of this second half. Seeing the big man McDougal with the flashy no look. Kirby Ordway in isolation. Banks on him. 
at Noah Jovich for a second. Instead, kicks it inside. That's a fadeaway shot for Chapman. Daly, that won't fall. Rebound to Banks. Yeah, and he realized they've been holding the ball for too long. He's got to put up a shot now. So that's, that's what we saw there. Here's Zane Davis. He had those six first quarter points on a pair of triples. Now he's trying to get two more. Can't get it to go. Walker on the offensive board and the two-handed slam. Give me that. Ubi Walker pushes the lead to 14 time out, with time an out. emphasis, and that's going to lead to an Indy Stripes Start it. timeout. <clears throat> and we are going to take a step away with 129 to play in the third quarter. We will be back for the close of the final three.
Welcome back. We are in Colorado. 1.29 to play in the third quarter. Rocky Mountain holding a 14-point lead over the Indy Stripes. Stay tuned for after this game. We will get a post-up with Maestro and Rick Ice Cold Takes Blaze. And then, of course, an extended version of post-up tomorrow with that same dynamic duo in between our 7 and our 9 o'clock games. A little double header moving away from that Tuesday triple header approach we've had for the last two weeks triple here from Kirby Ordway doesn't even need to see it fall 55-44 Ordway pulling the Indy Stripes back to within 11 and that's what they're going to need if they're going to get back in this game they got to hit their shots Gaffney on the right side guarded by Noah Jovic up top to Jay Zane Davis Mid-range pull-up won't fall, but the foul. foul called here on Tyler Stevens. Tyler Ste and that's going to send Davis foul. to the line. Opportunity two. to get two points back here. Just over a minute to play. And Real quick, we'll just give you that schedule here for tomorrow on SimWorld TV. The first we game we will be in line. Barcelona Shooting. for two. Europe and Bad Boys two. Basketball. And then we'll head over to Hollywood, California for Showtime and Best Coast Ballers. Plenty of firepower on the floor. Both games, Henry Vekic leading Europe. Of course, Lorenzo Phenom for Bad Boys Basketball in a matchup of big-time bigs. And then Showtime, Bronny James has been dynamic. He followed up that big 34-point outing against Bay Area 24, I believe it was, and Showtime's last game, and then, of course, Best Coast Ballers. Their dynamic backcourt of Liz Darius Outlaw and Mikey Williams. As we continue divisional play here to kick off the senior group season. All right, we got under a minute to play here. Hand off to Noah Jovic. Step back three over the top of Maury Washington, and it's a 10-point game. Jovic had been two of six, missing his last four shots before that one. Here's Banks, kicks it out. Booby Walker can't get that to go. Ball oh, out of bounds, Indy Stripes ball, 35.4, 10-point game as Indy Stripes is trailed by basically 12 for much of this one in the third quarter, that is. They have not been able to pull it back in. Now they have an opportunity to do just that, cut it to within 10 points in the third quarter, headed to the fourth. Nari James right past Ireland early, and Ireland early maybe having a great James. offensive game, but he is not having a good defensive game. That is 17 points from Bonari James. Ireland early meanwhile is 14 on the other end. Four triples to account for those. 16 seconds to play here in the third. Eight point game. Monsters have seen what was a 14 point lead dwindle. Ireland early. Operating, trying to get it back. Five seconds to shoot. Up top, Lucas Banks. He's gonna have to pull over the top of Bonari James. Won't fall, rebound. Inside, it's Maury Washington. Did he beat the buzzer? He did. It's a 10-point lead for Rocky Mountain Monsters as we head to the fourth quarter in Colorado. Benari James couldn't quite get them all the way back. A double-digit lead for the Monsters looking for their third win of the season.
Welcome back to Colorado. Final eight minutes of our matchup on Monday night. Monsters leading the Indy Stripes 59-49 in a scoring showdown between Ireland early and Benari James. James with 15, or excuse me, 17 points entering the fourth quarter. Ireland early, meanwhile, 14. And a big block here from Maury Washington. Leading to the break the other direction is Zane Davis. That's a big man. Excuse me, that's a big Washington. kid. Sidestep move there from Lucas Banks. Frees it up. 12-point lead back for Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain Monsters, let's ride. All right, Russell. Let's, uh, let's table that one because anytime he's involved with something in Colorado, it has not been successful. I hear he's actually in attendance at this game. Uh, well, that, that doesn't explain anything, actually. It explains why there's such positive vibes, though. I'll say that. Yep. Everyone's Banks having a good time. Shot. Say that again, Siege. Everyone's having a good time, and you can attribute that to Russell Wilson. Oh bigger my disappointment, God. but him got a triple Benari from Benari James up over the 20 point mark now. Trying to keep him in this game. If anyone can, it's him. Washington can't get that to go. His own miss, and that's up and in. Washington. Those offensive boards, you, you just got to find a way to keep them off the glass. I know they've got some big guys down low, but you got to put a body on them and keep them from those boards. Benari James with ease Benari past James. Ireland early, and i got to say, for as great as Ireland early has been in this game siege, Benari James has really just gone past him on every single time down, and it makes you wonder because for Indy, they have not put Benari on Ireland early defensively. I wonder if there needs to be a change for Rocky Mountain on who is defending Benari James. And, and that's the tough question because oh, he's such a powerful man of those. But that, that's really the question because you look at Ireland early and, and he's, you know, thought of as one of their better perimeter defenders. And I think, if anything, it really just speaks to Benari James. Uh, he can score on anybody. He, there's not a soul in this league that can guard him. James can't get that step back to go. 67-54, though, again, a big night offensively as Zane Davis is 32, I beg your pardon, 69-54. This is the largest lead of the game here now for Rocky Mountain. And I mean, if those are going to fall with a hand in their face like that, it's the stripes have just, you know, got to start the buses and get them warmed up. James, step back, three, off the front rim, rebound under the other direction is Bell. Bell, straight to the hoop. Tries to get a contested one up. That won't fall. Rebound and defense from McGee. Opposite direction. A quiet night here from Jay Luss. Just two points. Haven't heard much of him for Indy Stripes. One of the higher ranked. And Benari James gets that alley to fall. He's just oh, got, a, he's got a knack for putting the ball in the basket. Well, not the largest in stature, but gets up there for the tip in. Here's early for Washington. Double team comes on Washington. That frees early for a three. Five for five yet again. Miss. 72-56. Ireland early. Five oh. for five from deep and promptly lets the James out. walk. James. Nice and easy to lay up timeout. one. That's going to bring a Rocky Mountain Rocky Monsters mountain. timeout. And we are going to step away with 4.15 to play here in the fourth quarter. Monsters up 14.
lie, yeah. Same place that I lie, yeah. In your eyes, body, soul, and mind. Where comes the find it? In the wound of the queen, making love so supreme. Back here in Colorado, Rocky Mountain Monsters have built a 14-point lead here over the Indy Stripes with 4.15 to play in the fourth quarter. See, just been a game that we've got 26 points from Benari James, but it seems as if the problem here for the Indy Stripes is they've just been unable to slow down anything from the Rocky Mountain Monsters attack. You've got 17 from Ireland early. He's perfect 5 for 5 from deep. You've got 10 from Zane Davis. He's hit a couple threes. You've got 10 from Maury Washington, who has feasted inside. This is a team, Rocky Mountain. They're plus 8 in second chance opportunities, and they're plus 12 from beyond the arc. Nine made threes compared to five. I threw a lot at you, but is that really the story, that there's just too many options for Rocky Mountain and Indy's not getting enough support from Benari James? I think it really is the story. I think we've got a couple stories, one for each team, the monsters. I think we've got a couple different stories. Like I said, I, like you said, it's it's a pick your poison kind of thing. They've got their bigs inside. They've got shooters like early, maybe the best in all of Sim World Hoops. They've got guys who can handle the ball. They've got pretty good team defense, unless it's Benari James, but that's a hard guard in general. But uh, it's a pick your poison type thing, and right now, all the poison has taken effect. And with the stripes, I think it's a, a lot more of what we talked about early. They're kind of trying to figure themselves out and how can they turn the talent that they have into a successful basketball team. Gaffney to pull up mid-range falls, and that's his second straight bucket. That comes after a Benari James turnover. 76-58, and this thing kind of had been teetering towards a runaway victory for the Monsters, and now it seems all but certain with just over three to play. Rocky Mountain, just the plethora of attack they now have as Kirby Ordway lays Kirby it in Ordway. 10 second chance points uh, compared to zero for Indy in a game that they're leading by 16. So you take away a couple second chance opportunities, this becomes a 10 point game. Then you flip a couple of those triples in the opposite direction and suddenly we got a ball game. So huge looking to be win here for Rocky Mountain. They'll improve to three and oh, but a step out of bounds by Lucas Banks. Throughout the white line, end line was the out of bounds line. Assuming the score holds, it'll be Indy dropping to 0 and 3. That would be the bottom of the barrel in the Frontier Division. They're already there at 0 and 2. Harlan Zombies are at 1 and 2, and a tough take inside foul called on Banks. That's going to send Jay Lus, who we haven't really heard a lot from tonight, Siege. Yeah, Jay Lus has been getting a little bit overshadowed. And, you know, we've got a guy like, Bron you know, Bernari James that you're playing with. It, it, that's easy to happen. And I think that's something Shoot big too. when we talk about shooting the Stripes two. figuring out who they are as a basketball team and how to turn that talent into a winning basketball. is like, sure, Bernari James could drop 30 a game, but if you're not winning those games, how do I use these other guys we've got, like Jay Lewis or, like, Kirby Ordway, Reza Red, you know, 
Johan, like how do we use those guys to complement Benari? Because if Benari scores 30 a game, that's great. But if we're not winning games, then who really cares? So I think that's a big, that's going to be a big thing for them because these other guys they have are talented players. They're Hooper. But we got to see them get involved. We got to see them make plays too. And if that means Benari's making plays for them, great. But they've got to get going or this is going to be a tough year for the Stripes. Plus hits both, 76-62. And really hasn't been an inefficient shooting night for Indy. They've shot right around 50%. It has been very efficient. And another bucket for Gaffney. That's six here in the fourth as he is smelling blood in the water. Pushes the lead back to 16. But it's really been a plethora of scoring, not from just multiple people, but efficient scoring for Rocky Mountain. Up over 50% in this game. Game that they've now really started to run away with. Bernari James, deep three. That won't fall. Rebound to McDougal. It's over to Kenneth Gaffney, who has certainly taken on the reins of this chariot in the fourth quarter. He drives on Reza Red. Gets another one to go. Are you kidding me, Kenneth Gaffney? He's a man among friends. Gaffney was quiet through the first three and a half quarters, but he has turned it on with 4.15. They have made a concerted effort. Now McDougal on the steal. Headed the other way to Gaffney. He'll slow it down. Just gets it across the midline. He's going to work on Ordway. Up over red. Can't get that to fall. The first miss after four straight buckets from Rocky Mountain starting point guard and the number 48 ranked player in the country. Lost three, gets it to go, 80-65, not quite done yet. Our scoring is, but the result again, we believe to be in, in hand, 80-65. to Currently Rocky Mountain will improve to three, and oh, don't forget, Rick Blazin takes up on deck in the post up with Maestro as they will break down this game and preview our big slate of action of Tuesday night hoops at SimWorld Hoops, including the double header on SimWorld TV. Ordway deep two will fall, rebound to McDougal. Gaffney is, is again is really taking over here in the fourth. He goes at Benari James, won't get that to fall. James the board, but it's been Gaffney's fourth quarter dominance, especially in the last four minutes. That helped Rocky Mountain take what had been a game that really since the second quarter had been in hand for Rocky Mountain in terms of a 12 to 15 point lead basically throughout. A late run by Indy got them to within eight late in the third, but a Maury Washington as the triple falls for Ireland early make them six for six from downtown. It was a Maury Washington buzzer beating layup to end the third quarter that pushed it back to 10. And been Rocky Mountain all the way in the fourth as Benari James will add two more that just Benari James. gets him up near that 30 point mark but elite shooting from Ireland early doesn't miss from deep dynamic closing from Kenneth Gaffney and that is it for the Rocky Mountain Monsters and a big win 83-67 over the Indy Stripes they move now to 3-0 in Frontier Indy drops to 0-3 those are the top and the bottom two teams in the division for my partner in crime tonight, Siege, for our producer, Yells, thank you all for joining us on the special Good Monday matinee, and we'll see you tomorrow night for Simmerald Hoops Doubleheader. Here at the Ranch Center.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Post Up. I'm Maestro, joined by the man who saved me from my longest trip to the moon when the engine exploded. And I said, Houston, we had a problem. <laughs> the host of Blazing Takes, Rick Blaze. How you doing tonight, baby? Hey, my brother, that intro is so phenomenal, man. I don't even know what to say to that. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> hey, so I appreciate you, brother. We had a, we had a, we had a, I'm going to say we had a game tonight. We had a game night between Rocky Mountain and Indy Stripes, a great call by Siege and 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 Mr. Media Marsh himself. Oh, uh, okay. We got Definitely a perfect Rocky season. for sure. Yeah, we this got was, a perfect season going. We got a perfect Rocky, season going. Rocky for sure. I'll tell you this. Uh what we did well, well, I found out some other news tonight too. The Indy Stripes has just announced that Coach Storm. And, and Bernard James are going to be playing at the collegiate level together as well. They must have just announced this just now because I don't understand why. I love the play style. The play style is exciting. Bernard gets 30. He probably can go 30 every night with the way that this team was constructed right now. Right. But it's not getting you wins, though. If you watch, if you listen to my podcast, I said earlier today, it's going to be Christ going to have to come back before Indy win like this. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. You got to mm. get the big man involved. I know it's not sexy to slow the game down to give it to Big Resurrect, but that's going to help you get more meaningful possessions and get and stop getting ran up out the gym every day. But, again, what do I know? Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> first of all, totally nail it. Again, if you, have, if you haven't checked it out, please go back and check because we always keep our receipts because we want you guys to keep Amen. the receipts on us. I want you to keep the receipts on us. So, you know, my, you know, my man Blaze with his Blaze and Takes podcast, also check out the Marsh Pod by, by Marsh Mr. Media. And, of course, our award-winning, our award-winning around the table with E-Lava and the Fat mm-hmm. Man. Matt. You know, we just got, we just got, you know, they do have an award. I have it here somewhere. Wait, hold on a second. I, don't here, I got it right here. I got it right here. Yeah, I had a, had a, have a can of air on my table. So good to go. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got it. But, you know, Blaze, I'm just going to, I have to say this, and I need you to straighten me out. A lot of bad shots, man. A lot of just not good ball movement. Mm-hmm. You should never see a fall away three when you have 15 seconds left to go on the shot clock. You just, there's certain things you don't, it just mm-hmm. shouldn't happen in smart basketball. And, you know, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I, I don't want to say, you know, I, I don't want to go there because I know cats are learning. They're figuring out their game. Right. Heck, I'll even, heck, I'll, I'll even tell you a story of my very first time playing organized basketball. So, you know, I'm the last person to tell you what to do, when to do. Because I know right. the first time I stepped on the court, I'll tell you the story later. Anyway, a lot of bad shots, man. Just bad choices. Uh, the game for the Indy Stripes got put down to like maybe two out of the five players. You can't win like that against yeah. anybody, let alone a team right now. I'm, and, and, and with all due respect, with, with Rocky Mountain, and again, I got to give Coach Robinson a big pull up because yeah. he, got, he, he got the first what you got in here today. And I'm going to tell him, you got your season going. Here's what's happening, hmm. man. Any ball movement is every ball movement. Yeah, and and when I see ball movement between two players, I don't see ball movement. And when I see five players and three are not in, not not on the floor, that's a pickup game. Mm-hmm. And what I saw tonight with Indy Stripes was that very same thing. I saw forced passes when they did pass, fall away threes when it was way too early in the clock. And I'm not trying to make this critical again. I and I know it's coming across that way, but that's just what it was. And I'm just thinking yeah. to myself, you know what? One more pass. Look to the left. Look to the right. Man open in the corner. You got a guy beat. Take it to the rim. Don't beat a guy and go back out past the past the arc to take a bad right. shot. Right. You know, it, it all those things just, just add it up and it be, and it becomes that snowball effect uh, effect, man. It's like it seemed like every time they started getting close. And again, this is my eye. So Rick, I need mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Every time it seemed like they got close, right? They got it to 10. They got it to nine. Next thing you know. Street ball came back in and Siege yeah. said, and Siege said it perfect. If this was a pickup game, that's one thing. This is yeah. not a pickup game. You're playing against a team that has a strategy and they're playing with that strategy. And man, it showed when we got to the fourth quarter. I just figured, you know what, at this particular point, you know, somebody, you know, I'm a coachable rocket, throw it to 
downtown. Go to downtown. <laughs> it, it was, and, and uh, you know, because it was just no way it was going to happen. Yeah, and it and it did. And again, I'm I'm sure Coach Storm is taking all this into consideration. I know he doesn't want to lose. He want, doesn't want to continue to lose. These players do not want to continue to lose. I'm sure after tonight, they're probably going to have a, a nice team meeting, team meeting and decide, you know what, we're going to do what we need to do as a team to win, and we might just make a bunch of drastic changes because right now what you're doing is not working. You, you know, and I tell you, I've, I've, coached, I've coached perfect seasons on both sides of the arc, right? My very first – my very first – Clay coaching job, women's basketball, JUCO Division Three, up in New York. We went 0 and 18, man. And but you know what we had every game? We had improvement. I had I started I got handed the team 15 minutes before the very first game of the season because wow. the head coach and the AD had a had a had a all out in the parking lot, had to call a cops fight. And that's how wow. I got the gig. So, wow. you know, I'm going to tell you that story later when we, when we talk about the pills you're going to take. But man, <laughs> oh, man, it was just, you know what? It, it was just, man, it was just something else tonight. And, you know, I, you know, I will say this. I'm going to say this. The one thing that I appreciated about what Indy was doing tonight is their help side defense was strong because nothing came from backside. Yeah. Everything was front side, which means players aren't getting their leverage. You know, they're not figuring out how to keep their feet in front of the guy and stuff like that. So but nothing came backside. And that's what I that's where I thought the weakness was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot of back, you know, backdoor lobs, backdoor cuts, backdoor passes. That didn't happen. So that's one good thing to see that happen for Indy tonight. So they got that. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, they got backdoor plenty of time. It just wasn't to the way that you you described me. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, and hey, you know what's going to happen? Even on the best of plays, as as at one particular point, somebody's going to thread the needle in the right way with the right leverage at the right point against somebody's dominant hand, against another player's dominant eye, and that's going to happen. But yeah. it didn't happen as much as I thought it was going to happen. And oh, by the way, I'm again. I need you to. I need you to calm me down. Every time that Indy got backdoored, it was a good play. It wasn't Agreed. because it wasn't Agreed. because somebody just slopped off and lost, no, and, you know, lost contain. Right. Exactly. Agreed. Exactly. Exactly. And no, you know, I agree. You know what? And speaking of lost contain, because I know you was ready to spill some tea on everybody. Tonight. <laughs> everybody said, I'm going to fire it up. I'm fired up tonight. I got, know, my like, peaky, I got my peaky finger up. That's for sure. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. That's right. And again, we're going to give it out to Coach Robinson with the very first Shout out for the day of what you got, Coach Robinson. Good job. Keep those guys going. Absolutely. Keep them going. And, take, and, I, and you know, and I'll say this: Rocky Mountain, you're three and zero. Oh, that's better than two and one. Heck of a lot better than one and two. And show dang better than zero oh and three. So oh there you three, go. Man. You know, that's, that's... It, 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 <laughs> you know. But speaking of zero oh and three, we got some players that I know they got paper on them out there. And if you're from the hood, you know what I mean when I say you got paper. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, you know, a judge signed a warrant, somebody looking for somebody. <laughs> and but the problem is, and this goes back to an article that I put up. I had to put it up. I was going to save it. I was going to save it for my article tomorrow. The, look, look, it hit me. It hit me in my soul, Rick. It was like, oh, I got to say this right now. Mm-hmm, I had to go mm-hmm. and type it out. And it was looking at looking at our boys here. Quan Singleton and Olin Mark the third. How they were. These guys are, man. You know what? I'm not gonna say Bonnie and Clyde. I'm not gonna say Butch Cassidy and Sundance <laughs> Kid. I, you know, because you know they all got caught. My, yeah. my, my boys are getting it done in those in the steel department. They Ray, they Ray and Claude. Oh, bruh, bruh. Ray, uh, Ray, uh, <laughs> Ray and Claude. <laughs> thank you, man. Up to the point, getting it done. And you know what? Deals are about timing, heart, and smarts. Correct. Okay. You know, that one thing that, you know, and and, and you know what I'm going to say, every player you ever saw, there was a woman basketball player for the University of Georgia back in the day, Shara Butler. I think she set the NCAA record in steals at the time, I think for both men and women. And she had this technique, and please fact check me on this, and if I'm wrong, you know I'm going to have to correct myself. But she had this technique where she would pick the ball up after it hits the ground, not when it was leaving the hand to force, Mm. you know, an awkward shift. She'd right. wait till the ball was just about to hit the ground. That's when she'd make that move because then she'd catch the cat off pound. You know, I can like her balance. opponent off, off okay. balance, right? Okay. So I see guys doing this, and 
you know, for our fans who might not understand, when they look at their stats, 2.3 steals a game, 2.7 steals a game. The whole team is leading in forced turnovers. The team right. is leading in average steals, I think, with 11 per game. When you see this, what you're seeing is a group of players that have a, I'm going to use this word, Rick, please slap me in the back of my head, laser focus, because people always misuse that, a <laughs> laser focus on what they have to do to disrupt the other team's offensive energy. Yes, yes. And when I put that article together, when I said math is hard, and I was looking at their defense because you know I'm all about the dirty dirt. I'm right. all about the stuff that don't count in the stat book. I want to see some elbow burns. I want to see your pants ripped because you slid into somebody's table and you got up <laughs> too fast and you didn't fix yourself. I want to see your jock crap on crooked because you was just trying to get there to get to your spot. Get, give me that. And I'm looking at their their team record, and I'm like, what in the holy muck is that? Yeah, yeah. So I went back. I pulled a blaze. I went back. I looked at the offensive stats and went, oh, I got you. So that tells me with all that over the top, I'm going to use the word, all world defense, mm -hmm. they're not converting. Mm -mm. You got to put the ball in the basket at the end of the day, baby. Yep. You have to you have to convert those because now when you don't, even though you stole a possession, you just gave away a possession. Right. And worse, right. what happened? And, and Blaze, you know what happens when you give away a possession? Tick tock, tick tock, baby. Yeah. Man, that, man, that hourglass is glued to the table, Holmes. It's not going to stop until it goes to triple zeros. And you know when that happens, every time you miss an opportunity, when you take one. That means you just gave the opportunity back. You negated all yeah. of that hard work. And yeah. there is no way in my mind, and I need you to, I need you to I need you to straighten me out, like we say. There is no way in my mind that that team, the Philadelphia Elite, with that talent, is gonna keep wasting those defensive opportunities. Yeah. They, I mean, I let's hope not. Right, there's another team that really needs to get back to the drawing board and kind of figure some things out. They're the polar opposite of uh, Indy. Uh, Indy, Indy can't stop anyone. They can score with the best of them. Their problem is stopping is stopping people. Uh, so we got two teams on a on different ends of the spectrum that's mm -hmm. still looking to get out the dungeon and, and get some wins together. So the coaches are scratching their heads, the players are scratching their heads. They just got to come with a game plan and stick with something that they think is going to work. Who do you think gonna hit it first? Oh, who gonna get the first win? Yeah, between India and Philadelphia. Who plays next? Uh, I think what I think. Let's see. Philadelphia plays it. next, right? Yeah. Um, that's right. I think no. I, I'm gonna go with India with the first win. Okay. I don't okay. even know who they play next, but I'm gonna say the the first team to win out of two is gonna be Indy. Now look, man, India's schedule is rough. They got Run DMV, and I believe they follow that up with. I don't I believe they followed up with well, well you know what they owe in forever, so they got to upset somebody anyway to get a win. Oh, so, okay, so somebody got no, no matter something. no matter who no matter who they beat, it's gonna be an upset because they ain't somebody beat got, nobody. Somebody gotta <laughs> get <guess> something. <laughs> somebody got somebody gonna get hey, something tonight. If the guys from the boys and girls club coming in the gym and they beat them, that's gonna count. Hey, you know what? Everything is gonna count for a win, baby. Brother, now let me tell you, a win is a win. A win is a I win. Don't, I don't I don't kill. What's up? Just like Sister Teresa on her gambling habit when she tells us, <laughs> I don't care if the other team puts out there in wheelchairs. I want you guys to beat them to the back. Make it happen. Win's a win. And she said, the Lord gonna thank you. Trust the me. Lord she do. The Lord, the Lord, <laughs> Lord gonna thank <laughs> I gotta find out if she did felony prison time. That's my son, brother, mercy boy. I said, oh, but, man. But, but you know what? Straight up, Blaze. You know what? That idea of at some point, you, okay, I'm going to go back to what I said the very first night we worked together. It's, it's hard to lose in the league. It's hard to win in the league. Mm -hmm. You got to work for both. Correct. You know, no way about it. You got to work for both. So we got undefeated and we got other people working on the other side of the perfect season. Correct. And Correct. you don't want to be that cat. You know that team. You know what I'm going to say? 0-10. Oh, 0-11. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 0-11. Oh, yeah. Oh, and 12. The jock strap are feeling a little bit soggy right now. 
that seat when you get up off of it smoking a little bit because you just got through squeezing. It's a little too much like you're on the Peloton. You know, the, all, all that stuff going sideways. And you know, right, no matter what, no matter what everybody says outside their mouth, you know it's adding up in the head. Yeah, you know it's adding up. And you, sure. and you and you've seen these guys enough. You know what's going on. You know what's yeah. going on all the way down to, to the point. You know what's going on. And you know better than the rest of us when what's going on between the ears is affecting what's going on between the lines on the, on the, on the court. Absolutely. And you have to make those adjustments. I agree. So, I 100% agree. So we'll right, see. Rick. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. All right, Rick, I got to ask you. Uh-huh. Red pill or blue pill, baby? Oh, man. Um, Let's go red. Okay. So here's the context for that. See, for our listeners, and we thank you guys for checking us out and listening tonight. We always want to give a shout out to the great production work of Ron Yells, Mahmoudi, all, all the whole team that really gets it done. And, of course, to our great, great, great in the booth team during the game, Siege and Maestro. I mean, Maestro, Mr. Media. I don't even know who I am anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Siege and Mr. Marsh. So here's the context of that. I'm going to go back to that, what I was telling you earlier. I'm assistant coach for women's basketball team. The AD and the head coach get into a thing, and it becomes more than a thing. Like somebody got taken away in the back of a car in handcuffs. Wow. Right. And it was like the AD says, your team now. Okay. So best part about it, half the team had quit. I had four ladies, and we were facing a team that went to the national final four for Division Three the year before. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, with, I mean, with the – Came in with a maxed out 15 man roster, a five person coaching staff, a bus that had actually had the real school colors on the side, except for like our bus was basically like a Holiday Inn van that we kind of took and never gave back. Mm, so, so I'm faced with this, and I'm trying to, get, I'm just trying to get through the night. You know, I just want to get through the night, and then I'm thinking we got, we have a road game the next day. So I'm thinking, do I red pill it? Do I blue pill it? Do I blow it up? Do I say, look, we're just going to do shell game until we can have a real practice mm -hmm. or do I run what the other coach did? So now we all these coaching changes that we got going on this year. I mean, what? We've had three since the season started. Yeah. Correct me. Correct me. Three. Yeah. OK, we had three. So, Rick, what do you do? Blaze, what do you do? You go in. It's your team now. Season has started. You got a game in a day. You red yeah. pill them. You blue pill them. Well, at, at that point, in those dire situations. You just want to be confident. You just want to instill confidence in those guys. Forget about the X's and O's because they are already, you know, mentally is where you got to cap, recapture them, refocus their attention. You know they can play. They wouldn't be on the team if they couldn't play, right? So in a situation like that, you got to get them mentally prepared because mental, if you can come in prepared mentally every game, you'll have a shot every game. Doesn't mean you're going to win every game, but you'll have a shot every game. And if you're not, but if you're not mentally prepared, then you've lost before you walked in the gym. Very true. Very true. And we've been saying it all night. We've been saying it all night. It goes on between the ears before it before it matters out there on between the lines all Absolutely. the time. That's a, that's a very good point. That's what I ended up doing, too. I basically ended up I ended up basically saying, you know what, let's go on and do the blue pill. Let's just go on and get in it. Make sure that you guys can defend yourself every night and we'll move through. And of course, right. that was that team. That was the team I was telling you about. We had the perfect season. Oh, and 18. But I tell you something. We were in every game. We were in every game, there you including, go. There you including, go. including, including against the uh, two-time national national championship team. Well, they weren't two-time yet. They were we were about to be that year. Uh, that actually had three players that ended up going to Division One and then onto the WNBA. So you know ah. those young ladies, those young ladies, I'll always be proud of them, man. Yeah. They stuck their nose in it. And oh, by the way, this was my team makeup, brother. I had one player who had played organized basketball in high school. When she was a freshman, she's now in college. Wow! I had I had two soccer players, one girl who played NBA Live with her boyfriend, and one girl who just watched game on TV. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what'd you say, babe? What'd you say, what'd you say, boss? I <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so you know, it it, it was every day. It was, you know, again, and you and, and Blaze, you know this. Coaching ain't about coaching. Coaching is about teaching. Yeah. No matter where you're at, you know, you're teaching something. There's a skill Correct. that's coming that it might, and yes, it might be related to what's on the floor, but.
but it's really going to go down to what's happening between your ears because that's where it all starts. All right. You know, and speaking of start tomorrow night, we got our, our first big game going up. We got Sim World Europe against the bad boys. We got another 0 and 3 team and a 2 and 1 team yeah. going out. And hey, you know, it's going to be interesting, right? Because these are all division matches, uh, uh, matchups tomorrow. Yeah, I, 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 I predict mm-hmm. the upset. I'm coming for the upset. You coming for the upset tomorrow? I'm coming for the upset. Sim World um, Europe get off the snide. They get a dub on tomorrow. Upset. You hear it here first. I got Blaze going today. Oh, by the way, happy 420 day. I know it's not 420 day, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Thank you. So here we go. <laughs> we, got, we got Sim World Oceania. I'm going to see Sim World Oceania and the Bay Area. What's going to happen? I got to go, 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 go Bay Area. No, no, Got to go Bay Area? They're going to be 0-4. They're going to be 0-4? Okay. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't not getting out the snap that night. All right. You know what? <laughs> I feel I'm 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 going to step out there. I'm going to step oh, out there. Got- I got Oceania. Come on. I got Oceania tomorrow. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about something. I'm just gonna That's say good. that. I'm just gonna I say that. All, I am taking all bets though. Yeah, okay, there you go. Good, so I go watch Taylor. Cash Hope. apps, and we're gonna we gonna see <laughs> what I'm I'm looking on that can of air ward I got for around the table, <laughs> and you know what? Somebody stole my dime and nickel, so you have to wait on that. So here we go. Uh, we, we also got from in the Savannah Division, Lone Star three and Mm-hmm. The AT Aliens one and two. And they're where are they playing? Atlanta's but, tough at home. Uh, but I think I I think I think I think Lone Star is home tomorrow. Okay, I, I like I like I like Lone Star now. Okay, yeah, that yeah, I like Lone Star. Uh, uh, that's man, man, man. That's the hard court. They to look play good. On. Lone Star looking good. Well, they're yeah. they're they've always been solid defensively because of Derrick Lone, but their mm-hmm. their two tandem guard situation got to putting up points too. They're tough. They're tough out every time. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay, a Tropic Division matchup. We got the H Town Hoopers. 3 and 0 mm-hmm. against Sim World South America 2 and 0. Something's got to give. Oh, this is a tough one. Something's because South, give. South America's a trap game. You think so? You <laughs> South think America's so? one of those trap teams. Yeah, they're one of those teams. You think you can walk two, in wait, 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 wait. Oh, but, 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 hold up, hold up. Slow down, slow down. You're going to tell me to my faces South America at 2 and 0. Is a trap game, brother? It's a trap it's, it's, game. Explain, explain yourself. Well, you gotta understand. They're they're South America's got two and zero, but they've been. It's like a fight on the. They haven't been hitting the headlines like like H Town Hoopers is. Okay. H Town's been all over the head news, all over the headlines. H Town's were top five in the new power rings. Where's South, where's South America? They but they're not top five. All right. I don't think they're top ten. Right. So that's a that's a trap game because. Yeah, they reckon it's two and zero, but it's like a tree falling in the forest. If you don't hear it, did it actually happen? Ooh, ooh, you hit me with the tree in the forest in the middle you know of the mean? night, right after Black Friday. Oh Lord, that's uh, that's some so. Other it's a right trap there. game for H Town. Um, oh man, I'm not gonna go against my guy. I'm not gonna go against H Town, but H right. Town, be prepared. This is All a tra- right. this is a trap game. All right, but I can't go against my guys. H Town, okay, keep no, it going. Look. Hey, I, hey, look, I respect that Lord to, you know, ride or die, right? That's yes, how we sir. do it. Okay, so again, now, Frontier Division, we come back with Rocky Mountain, now at 3-0, and against the Heartland Biters, I mean, the Heartland Zombies. <laughs> well, uh, did I say that too soon? Too soon? Okay, too hey, soon. The Heartland I, Zombies? <laughs> zombies. And, and I, think they're play, I think they're playing at home. So I I, I give Zombies a do they got you? Got to give them credit. Anytime they playing at home with those crazy fans, uh, but I'm, I'm but I'm not going against Rocky Mountain right now. They're too hot. They're 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 hot right now. Right. They are in fuego right now. Uh, you're gonna have to get some zombies to eat them alive to slow them down right now. Uh, That's yeah, about the only you. thing I can stop them. I got you. And you know the best way to stop a zombie? Chick Fil A line. There you go. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the now for the feature game tomorrow night, Pacific Rim. Division time. Here we mm-hmm. go. Showtime. Two and one. Best Coast Ballers. Also yeah. two and one. Hey man, this is a this is a toss up game. This mm. is gonna be a really good. I'm gonna predict this is gonna be game of the season so far. Okay. Out of all know, the games we've seen, and we've seen some really great games. Don't get me wrong. Know, 
plays. You're absolutely right. I'm gonna let you finish your thought, but I'm gonna say something. When you said toss up game, I just realized something. Yeah, I'm, 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 I've, I've never heard you straddle the fence. You've yeah, you, always, you know me. You've always come out with the Mike Tyson swing in the first. You already in the know. First, so when you said, oh, I, "Wait, I need to get a DNA check. I need to make sure that's my yeah, boy." But okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. I I think this. I think whatever team makes the best defensive adjustments is going to mm-hmm. win this game. Great call. Uh, Great call. And so if I go by what's been taking place, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually going to give the edge to um, Showtime. I like their defense. Yeah, I it, think you know, they get a lot of – Brandon get a lot of credit for offensively, mm-hmm. and he's a, he's a show. He's a man. Absolutely. But 27.3 they, a game. Yeah, but they like top 10 and like very good defensive st- statistical categories. So yeah. they're actually getting it done uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So, uh, hey, defense win championships, baby. So – I'm gonna give okay. the, I'm gonna give the showtime to edge on that. Okay, all it's right. It's a toss you up know. game. Just know I tossed and turned yeah, over yeah, that. I, you know, I, I I could feel that confliction. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I had, tell you what, Blaze. I had a special team coach that used to make up words, and apparently he did it for all 40 years that he coached ball. He said we're gonna <laughs> athleticate the other guy. Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you need some <laughs> physical oration going on there, fellas. Physical. <laughs> So I'm, physical coloration. What, uh, man, brother? Let me tell you, wow. this brother. Man, that brother said some stuff, and you know what? You know, and you see what made it better? He had these Coke bottle glasses. No, I'm sorry, that's kind of being nice. He had the glasses. I'm telling you, if you can go out at night and put those glasses up, you could see the next galaxy over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> some thick joints, right? So, yeah. but I, I feel you. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. Tomorrow night between Showtime and Best Coast, I'm with you. I got. I have a feeling that Showtime is gonna bring. The defense, and that's gonna that's gonna be the difference. I think, I think it's gonna be another uh, another high scoring game. I'm with you. I think it's gonna come down to the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah. I think I think it's gonna be a difference of if best coast, if best coast can find a way. Now I'm gonna I know I'm gonna say, you don't have to check my temperature. I know what I'm gonna say, if best coast can find a way to sort of sl- I'm gonna say not not stop, but slow down, mm-hmm. Ronnie James. Mm-hmm. They can find a way to slow him down, put him in the mud a little bit. The problem is he can score from anywhere. Correct. So, you know, you can't exactly say, okay, we're just going to make him do this. We're going to make him do that because his game is, has too many dimensions to it. So, Correct. you know, but the idea of if they can just slow down that, if they can, if, if they can keep him somewhere around the low to mid 20 mark, and if they're able to play their game, and do that defensively, I think they got a shot to pull it out tomorrow night. See, and, that, and I, you know what? And I think, I, I think that's what most teams want to do. Mm-hmm. And this, is my opinion, that's not the right strategy. Well, you know why? He passes too well, too. That's what I'm. So what? The, what you don't want to do is let another man get another man hot. And you know I, how to do I'll that. I take my chances. If mm-hmm. Brun is going to beat me by himself, in some yeah, yeah. in some games he just might. I like but what I'm I not, like what I don't want is Brun to have 20, 18 points and ten assists. That's what there I don't go. want because somebody smart. else kicking my tail now. Smart, no, that's smart, and and, and that's what you know. I'm tell you something, you know, you and I both played in the same circus. We know we always know how coaches want to go about it. Sometimes they want to do a boxing one. They want you to, yeah, you know, you like you know sometimes. You want a coach to, you know, a coach to put up, you know, put you on a guy and say, I want you to tell me what kind of gum he's chewing. I want you to tell me what kind of deodorant he got on. I want you to tell me what they say to him in in the dang locker room. That's how much I want you on him so right. much. And then right. sometimes they say, you know what? Let him go crazy. We just gonna fill the lanes every place yeah. else. And you know yeah. what? You and sometimes I'm gonna say it. You got to be able to do both. You got to mix it up because if because you know I'm not gonna slack off on these coaches. You don't get. Two and one, two and one in that division, right? By not coaching, by not having a plan. Okay, this is what they're doing. Let's make adjustments. Okay, now they adjusted to our adjustment. Now we're going to make an adjustment. Oh, now they, you know, see what I'm saying? And oh, by the way, you know this, a good coach is going to get you. It's going to get you at least 10 to 11% more wins a season. Absolutely. Because they're because they're gonna be pointing the ship, they're gonna be put you out, they're gonna make you go the way you wanna go, they're gonna make you wanna go the way you need to go. Absolutely. And and, and both of these teams are rocking two top tier coaches. So we de- we definitely gonna have a chance to see that happening. Yeah, it should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. 
Absolutely. So, Blaze, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Story time with Blaze. Our man Trey Harmon, right? Yeah. He's bringing it night after night after night after night after night after game after game. And you know what I like about the way you do it? What's that? Classy. Straight Agreed. classy. Straight Agreed. classy. The whole time. Good. You know, I got I had I had to give him a straight up what you got here today, too, because my man brings his game. He brings a respect with it for his team. He bring he brings respect, backs up his coach. He, right. he does, he does what he has to do to be and, and oh by the way, don't don't sleep on that leadership. I tell you someone who 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 as a coach, when I would go to recruit, yes, I was looking at you on the floor, but you know, but you know what else I was looking at you? When the coach pulled you out the game, when the coach right. set you down. Right. Were, Absolutely. Were you in there clapping for your team? Were you pulling for your team? Were you trying to give your coach some ideas? Or were you sitting there with your arms crossed, looking up in the stands, trying to figure out the next time I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna do my thing. Correct, and, correct. and you know, and this guy, I'll tell you, man, Trey, my man's Trey, Bay Area Breakers, you got one right there, man. You got one right there. That's good to go. So I'm going to ask you now, story time, story time there, Blaze. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The very first time you played organized ball, the very first time that ball hit your hand and your body was on fire because you're on the court, you're in the uniform, the lights are on, the people are cheering. What did you do? Um, I look good. I just look good. I mean, <laughs> my my mom came to all my games, and uh, that was her number one thing. If I look good on the court, like well, is, your, is, your, is your jersey tucked right? Is your shoes laced up? You got your you got your wristbands. Your wristbands on right. Like that was the first. That was the first thing she told me after the game, whether I look good or not. She didn't care if I scored a point or a hundred. That's awesome. She'd be like, That's boy, awesome. you look good out there. So my first thing was, man, do I look good? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Love it's like mom. a life lesson. You know, like, yo, at the end of the day, shit, do I look hey, good? Look, hey, look, man, you got to look good to be good. That's how it goes, man. You always dress for the job you want, not the job you got, right? There you go. So if you bring it on clean, you do what you do. I Look, man, I look, here we go. I was, man, okay. Very first time, I get, I'll never forget this. Fifth grade, fifth grade basketball, all right? I Coach puts me in. I take the inbound pass. I take two dribbles. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. And I put up a shot. Mm -hmm. Now, I put up the shot to our goal. But notice I said I took two dribbles, which means guess where I was? <laughs> Still on the other wow. side of the floor. Wow. Great swish. Coach called a timeout and put me wow. out the game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he couldn't even get to me first. You know what my mama wow. did? Reach past him and <laughs> pop the back of my head. Said, "Boy, <laughs> you better oh, get to us." <laughs> but I just, and I remember that because after that, everybody started calling me sniper because <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it was just like, I mean, all the practice, all the work, all the ball in the yard, all the street ball, everything else, man. But something happened to me that that night when that ball hit my hands. Yeah, I felt like I was Superman, bro. I was like. The crowd is cheering. The lights were brighter. The air tasted better. My shoes felt <laughs> nicer. You know, yeah. my uniform felt like it was sparkling. And I took two dribbles and said, oh, wait, I'm looking right at the rim. And I realized that. I it. <laughs> yeah, realized it's like it. 59 feet away. <laughs> to put it right up, straight net. Crowd goes crazy. Coach calls times out. Mama slaps my head. Never happened again. <laughs> hey, hey, mama! Shooters, shooters, gonna shoot, baby. Shooters, shoot. <laughs> and oh, by the way, you know what she said out loud? She slapped me. You know, you ain't got that shot. <laughs> you gotta love mama, man. She always oh, gets yeah. you right. We always Absolutely. get you right. Want to appreciate everybody else for checking out the check, checking out the post up tonight. Tomorrow night we got a extended version for you yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. The Blaze and me, Maestro. Always a shout out to our production crew, our leadership, Yells, Mahmood, our our play-by-play -play team with Siege and Marsh. But remember, go back, check out Blazing Takes, check out the Marsh Pod, and check out Around the Table. We got those podcasts for you. Remember, we keep our receipts so you can keep them Absolutely. too. Absolutely. My show before, be before we roll, I yeah. got to pay off on my tees. I don't want nobody coming to oh, me yeah. tomorrow oh, talking right. about you Hit ain't it. say what you're supposed to say. Hit us. Hit us. Before I forget, let me get a shout out to Dwayne Bryant, Rizzo, the whole Heartland squad, them boys, them boys up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give them a shout out. Shout out to Moms, Moms Bryant. Bam. Here we go.
I got a little tea. Just a little tea. I got two I, sips of tea. Oh, okay, let's go. Here we go. Let me put my pinky up in there. Sip number one. Mm. I've heard through my sources that there is a particular coach and player that's really not getting along in the southern region uh, teams right now. I can't I can't divide what specific team or what specific mm-hmm. coach and player, but ju- let's just say this. I wouldn't be surprised if one of our new guys got a call up sooner than later to come join the squad. I think it's happening really soon. Oh. Whoa. That's, that's as far as I can wait. get to that now. Okay, now wait a minute. Now you said that was a little T? Look, that's, just, that's, that's his first sip. That's just the first sip. I got two sips. That 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 felt like half a glass to me. Hey. I, not, I, I, I just got goosebumps. Come on, give me you some need, more. You need your Bucky's <laughs> mug. Here we go. Second sip. Per my sources, you know how whenever it's per your sources, you know you gotta, you know, you gotta respect it. You, 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 per you, you, my sources. Uh-huh. I'm just gonna get deep. Per my sources, I'm told that there's negotiations right now that a player in Sim World may be getting the first. Big endorsement deal situation. Now, what hmm. I can say is, of course, this is happening out west. Okay. So it's a team out west. Okay. Uh, they play in Northern California. Oh boy. It is. It is not the James Brothers. Oh, okay. And that's that's the most I that's the most I can give. The I yep. nothing is final yet. Everything is still in talks. But if this goes down. Uh-oh. This would be the biggest endorsement by our, by our recruits. Yeah, if it goes down. So I keep you posted. Y'all just chew on that for a minute. Sip, 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 sip. Now, Mr. Blaze, you got me so hyped. I just pulled up my 64-ounce Under Armour cooler. I'm holding it against my chest. I'm giving it some love because I'm thinking you got to come better than that next time I put something in you because Blaze just filled me up with just two little you better bring me something good next time, Holmes. Way to bring that's it, Blaze. I'm loving that's it. And that's for, and I'm telling you something, my man Blaze, he's gonna keep his sources down because he's the real. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So again, shout out to everybody. You got some tea tonight. We're gonna bring some dinner tomorrow night in our extended <laughs> in our extended post up. Give us a shout up. We're going to give you a little bit of reminder tomorrow. Let you know, come hang with us. Again, our two showcase games tomorrow night, Sim World Europe against the Bad Boys at 7. Then at 9 o'clock, Showtime and Best Coast. Appreciate everybody checking us out tonight. As always, we appreciate you for just being you. And don't forget, no matter what you do, never let Jason Bourne borrow your car and sure as hell don't let him borrow your cell phone. There you go.